Ortiz was initially hired in March, March 22nd of 2004. He was promoted to sergeant in August of 2007, and he was promoted to lieutenant in March of 2015, and finally promoted to captain in October of 2017. Uh, we reviewed Captain Ortiz's disciplinary actions to include letters of counseling and written reprimands. His file contains five documents related to department orders, related to court procedures, failure to attend. So he had five different, different levels of documents in his personnel, all having to do with court and failed to attend. He had a counseling for uh, operation of a vehicle. And he had a reprimand for violation of a department order related to rules and regulated regulations involving commanding officers to set examples of subordinates, courtesy, conduct on becoming a police officer, and members and civilian employees to conform. Code of ethics involving private life and social media, social networking. So, uh, I don't have it right here this in front of me, but Captain Ortiz has had quite a bit of citizen complaints but not necessarily a lot of discipline. And most of the discipline has been related to not attending court earlier in his career. Um, so on this, Captain Ortiz's internal affairs profile shows a high amount of citizen complaints, like I said. However, his personal file reflects that he has been disciplined six times since he was hired in 2004 or them related to his failure to attend court. Um, according to Department Order 6, Chapter 8, sworn personnel promotions. Promotions are based on ability, equity, and integrity. With this said, staff is unable to prove or disprove the allegation of misconduct in this complaint and recommend it be closed as not sustained. Okay, um, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Robert Puente. I'm the chair of the, of the committee. Thank you for coming here. Um, our panel members may have questions for you, and we would appreciate through your attorney or yourself if you want to address the committee to do so at earlier in your Please, thank you very much. That's the only thing that we ask. Um, again, like we always say, we really, really do appreciate when, uh, when officers come. Um, have the time, you know, when we have. Um, cases against them, we basically <coughs> dealing with a vacant room. So you're being here uh, is very important. Thank you. Any questions from the panel? I do. Uh, Elizabeth, how common is the reprimands of court on officers? When, when they don't show up to court, I mean, is there a lot of, of those hanging around? Do we get, do we, do we, do we, have, we haven't really? We have some records this time. Where are they at? Are they here? No, they wouldn't be included in this file, uh, Madam Chair, but they are part of the research body that we okay. do. I know that there's a research and policies committee. There was a... Uh, yes. I know that the, the highest, the spirit of the officer that has the highest level of complaints or uh, reprimands from the city, and that was for the family from this court. For the court. Eight. Okay. Eight, and I think, I, I don't know how, I, I think he's on the precipice for termination uh, for this Yeah, we had right that, here. we talked about it in the last case. If you look, though, we've got on um, page one, it starts with his reprimands. <laughs> that one's having to do with court. Go back as far, it looks like between 2008 and 2014. What page in the packet? One and two, the bottom and top of the page. Shouldn't the complaint be against maybe somebody who's responsible?
possible for Florida again or somebody higher up? It just doesn't seem like the, the, this is correctly placed. Let me ask you a question. Yes, um, I tend to reverse yeah. yeah. So, But there's other motions. I think right. everyone's changing. Can I just answer something? Yes, I mean, ultimately, according to the ordinance, it would be the city that would be HR and perhaps the city manager at the time who would be responsible for it. So it's not like he promoted himself. No. Exactly. Right. So the fault the, the, the would fall him, but again, yeah. he got promoted. It's just a procedure somewhere else. It follows so somewhere who, else. So it, who would be the right person to, to uh, address this? I believe if you look at the department orders, I have it in there, and I think that uh, Ms. Bamboo was right. It says the Director of Human Resource, uh, it's on page two and three, the department order on promotions. It starts at DO6, chapter eight. does have to do with the uh, human resource department. I, I, no, I definitely understand the concern about that. There's, there's, but we, we don't have <laughs> any way we can't be making any yeah. recommendations regarding human resources. No, no but it, it's not a misconduct on his behalf that he got promoted. So even, and I think not the same that he got correct, it should be exonerated, but it's... So why don't you make a move? I'll, I'll move. Hey, well, well found it. Hold on, but... but Is it on point yet? Okay, I like unfounded. I like unfounded. So in this case, you would move to make a motion of unfounded. Unfounded. So let's add that. And is there a second on that? Wait a minute. Um, I, I still, I still <coughs> don't want to let this go so quickly. No, I'm not saying we're letting it go. But we right. can further expand so that you can make a motion to bring up. Uh, no, I know it's apparently the director of HR, and we don't have we don't have any, any uh, recommendations that can be made to the director of HR. But we can write a letter asking them to, to explain and to give some some feedback as to this. As to why you got promoted? So many times. I mean, let's face it. I mean, in, in my short time here, I've seen so many complaints regarding Captain Ortiz, <coughs> and the promotions keep coming. And, uh, and, and it's the top of mind. But it's it's not just on the system and things who receive us. Uh, you've got to understand that they look at more than that. They look at the <coughs> disciplinary file, which we looked at, and we know that besides court, there's two others, and two other disciplines that he's received. And so it, it's not just the citizen. Do you guys want to make a statement about this? No. Oh, so. statement yes. Is it a planned statement or is it going to be answers to any of our questions? I will make a, uh, we might do both. If we can. Let, me, let me just address the, the, from the legal and parliamentary perspective. The, if you do plan to make a statement, I'd like to advise, or if you do plan to make a statement, the panel does have the right to ask questions of the witness if he plans to make a statement, whether through his attorney or maybe they can ask questions to the attorney or of him himself. If um, the witness refuses to answer, um, uh, it's not under subpoena, we can't compel him to answer, but certainly the panel, I, I want to caution the witness to understand that the panel can take any inferences, whether adverse or not, against the refusal to respond, and they can do with it and give whatever weight uh, the trier of fact, which is the, ultimately the panel, they can give whatever weight they so desire. I hope that I hope that you do answer some questions because I think that there's been a lot of allegations among the things too. And you really haven't um, responded much um, in any of them. And um, I, I, I hope that you do answer it and, and consider um, giving us more information beyond the process. I think it'll help. I, I respect what you did. And I hope that um, whatever statements or whatever's said, you really have an open mind. Because as you said, officers are invited all the time and no one ever shows up. And there's a reason why I'm here today. And that is because what has been what has happened uh, is wrong. Enough is enough, is what you said. Enough is enough. I will say this though that um, historically what went on between the CIP and the FOP and the police department happened. Okay? I can 
can say that from my perspective and from what I'm seeing now, there's a genuine effort and will to gap the to bridge the gap between the police department, the community, um, and, and CIP. Um, I don't have I don't know that anyone in the panel have any anywhere close officers. In fact, everything that we've been doing is is really hoping to incorporate your guys to have a voice here to just uh, help us come to the, uh, get to the bottom of things. All I ask is for you to have an open mind. We always do. And if you do, you're going to be pretty shocked by the end of today. Okay. Um, I'm going to take the, the equipment that I have as chair. I'm going to ask you a question, sir. Um, and I say sir, and, uh, and I'm going to wait with you. You're, you're a captain, and you deserve the sir, I think. Um, where do you think <coughs> this is coming from? What is? We know where this is coming question. from. No, no, no. It's, it's a loaded question, but you have an allegation. And look, I know, you know, that to take a sergeant, you have to take a test. Lieutenant, you have to take a test. Um, so there's a there's a there's a there's a, a proper way to get there, and somebody here is saying that you have been basically a victim, or rather a favorite. That's what they're saying. Right? The, uh, the We're here to address allegations that uh, about that, that seem to be sustained, a recommendation of sustained uh, to say, to speculate where and why people have motives for filing complaints. Uh, we do know that this came from Mr. Garcia, right. who is a retired sergeant with the department. Right. But your question's a little more larger than that, right? right. Yes, yeah. Okay. So let's just get through them and see. Okay, let's go one by one. Okay. Um, do we have a so uh, I motion? Moved, I moved for unfounded. We have, have a second. There was, it's actually pending. There was a motion and a second. Right, we haven't voted on it yet. Okay, so all those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Okay. All right, complaint number two. Mr. Garcia alleged Captain Ortiz manipulated the system to better benefit himself by self-promoting 5% raises for SWAT, Marine Patrol, Bomb Squad, K-9, and MOTORS. Captain Ortiz has been given certi certifications without fully completing required classes, and trainers that are assigned to him have had to give him these cer certifications out of fear of losing their positions. Captain Ortiz abuses his powers, then reaps the benefits of the pay percentage increments without having to do the actual job or take the risks that come with it. These pay incentives increase Captain Ortiz's yearly salary and go toward his calculated lifelong pension payments. So, pay stubs and trading certificates for Captain Ortiz were reviewed and show that he is collecting earnings for SWAT and bomb squad, but it does not appear he has been trained or certified in either of these areas. A copy of the agreement between the City of Miami and the local Fraternal Order of Police uh, for the dates of October 1st, 2018 through September 30th, 2021 were obtained and reviewed. The bargaining unit ranks addressed in the agreement are officer, sergeant, lieutenant, and captain. Under Article 18, Wages 18.7, it says, and I quote, Effective the first full pay period following October 1, 2018, bargaining unit members, while active in below listed assignments, shall receive a 5% pay supplemental to be prorated and paid on a bi-weekly basis on their base rate of pay, unquote. And then if you look at the subsections, the two, I believe, are the bottom ones, included in this are bargaining unit members and supervisor, supervisors active or managing the bomb squad and bargaining unit members and supervisors active or managing the SWAT team. So it's my understanding uh, in the position that Captain Ortiz currently holds that he is the supervisor who is managing both the bomb squad and the SWAT. The contract was agreed upon on November 30th, 2018, by and between the representative parties to the authorized representative of the FOP, who at the time was Edward Lugo, and the city manager. CIP staff finds the agreement between the city of Miami and the local fraternal of police was properly negotiated and voted on by the authorized representative of the FOP, Edward Lugo, on behalf of the bargaining unit members and the city manager and recommend the allegation this allegation of misconduct be closed as not sustained. Any questions? Uh, yep. Go ahead. 
So what, where in the report does it say that these are the managing spots? It doesn't. Why doesn't it say that? I will put it in there for you. So you don't have to be, um, you don't have is to that, be certified to be a manager? Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And bottom scratch? Okay. And, and you don't have to be certified to be a manager? Elizabeth, you know? Be a supervisor? Uh, yeah. If you're supervising those that have a certification. Ask Noah. Have you heard of that? I don't believe so, but... Will that be anywhere in the orders? Do you guys want to answer that question? No. I mean, it seems like a simple question. For supervisor technicians? I mean, it seems very public. Oh, you're, you're, you're making allegations. I see on your recommendation it says not sustained. Why Why should Ms. Captain Ortiz respond to something you're it's not going to sustain? Process. Just as a, a reminder, the, 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 if, if you're, if the panel is entitled to ask questions. Um, and. That is the process that they went through. I just want to make sure that I was clear that they're entitled to ask it as they are of any witness, as they did with the witnesses before, but I'm sure you witnessed as well. Well, just to clarify that this is a recommendation from staff to us, okay? And, and based on the recommendation, this is why we have these questions. I think it's a legitimate question. Again, let me there's, no, there's no reason for, for it not to be answered. Let me, let me it can just, change. Uh, I don't know if I'm answering it. I've gone to several management <laughs> schools. The, the, um, the, I guess the records that the training has, they're not all complete. I also went, I was, I went to a bomb squad commander school that's run by the FBI. Uh, it's a certification. And so I do have the certifications and just don't have, I guess, all of them. They don't have every single class that I've attended. Again, um, Thank the, you. The, the, the way the panel works is that basically we're all different heads with different minds. Who sits on the panel? I, I don't even know. We're all the mayor has two, and we have a police representative. Who in this room is on the panel? Yeah, I don't even know. Just the reason. Okay. Um, there's Other six of us here. Um, right. What I was going to say is that we all we're all here for a reason, um, and we all ask questions. And this goes on. This is not an adversary. Situation, I don't think. Adversary. Um, adversary. Well, maybe not for you. No, no, no. It shouldn't be. <laughs> Captain, it shouldn't be. Right. It shouldn't be. Like I said, uh, I, for one, I'm very grateful that you're here. Um, and, and it's, you know what, if, if, if we're, like I said, if we're dealing with the wall and the wall is saying, this is what we have against this person, you know, or the allegations that they're not against, right? And the wall doesn't answer. For us, it's a problem. Because then, you know what, we're going to say, then we'll, the wall's great. But when we have somebody that's here, and this is not a court, you know, this is a panel, and for us, it's very important to hear from you. That's why we're asking questions. I ask questions of Steve all the time, and he asks questions of me, or the judge, or, you know, the chief. We all do that. Um, and it's not a matter of saying, you know, you're this. Because you know, you're not. We're not pointing fingers at anybody. I, again, I'm very grateful that you're here. And I respect you, sir. I respect you for your years of service. I respect you for who you are now. Papers, paper. And we're here to make, at least I'm here, to make sure that this paper gets the right amount of ink in it. Maybe that'll help. Yes, the recommendations can also be changed mm -hmm. at any level. And most of the time they are. Um, first of all, just so it's good, former judge, then sometimes I'm calling that as a yeah. term of yeah. respect. Term of respect and then you're wanting to be yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so, but also, yeah. um, and, I, and I appreciate the. Um, the captain answering our question. Honestly, a question like that, whether or not certifications are required to get this particular item, if it's an issue that's raised in the report, is it really something we ought to know on our own? That's something that should be explored. But where can we take this? Yeah, I also feel like we're missing, because you said you did take training, but there's no, it's not registered, so there's also a disconnect there. No, I understand that, but but frankly, if it's a relevant question, it's something that should be explored before it gets here, and it shouldn't be. Well, we, it was explored, and the FTC determined that we didn't have certifications for it, and so that's why we followed up. The question was, well, is it required? And no one knew the answer to that question. No, it doesn't did. say it's in anything required. that it's required. It it's says required. supervisors active we, we or managing. There are supervisors spots. under me that also get the incentive that are not bomb squad. They're Managers of those units. <coughs> <coughs> so the 
answer is no, you don't have to, but yes, he is. Thank you. Okay. All right. Do I have a... Um, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Regarding policies and procedures and issues, it, what was just raised, my own edification and also for educating the policy mem members and the panel members as we go forward, the statement was that other commanders, individuals that manage those units are not certified. Mm -hmm which could be potentially problematic. And I just wanted to make sh sure. But that's another that's another case that we may take up another time. Thank because you. Because these are individuals that command a scene. Right, I right? A dynamic, rapidly evolving scene. I understand. Okay. But okay. I, I just thought we need to get that information verified mm -hmm. before I feel comfortable voting. Okay, Is there some place I can check to that would have copies of your your farm squash commander school that you went to? You'll have to check the books for profile. I did. I did check with that. That's, they gave me, they sent me all your certifications and that was not one. Uh, travel paperwork. Yeah, but I gonna have the question of whether it's necessary to have it. Do I have not. it? I just, is there somewhere that says it, what the qualifications can are? You, you can no, address that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Page five, right. um, you have the language quoted from the contract. The yes. contract right. says that bargaining unit members and supervisors active or managing the bomb squad, etc. Okay. And, and the other thing, it has no requirement that the, in order to get this pay supplement, that you be, the supervisors okay. be certified. Okay. And so we just, since the language isn't right. there, Okay. They know how to say it. I guess that's what they meant. Okay, I, I'm ready for a motion right. to be a motion. Um, I'll motion to move for unfounded on the misconduct. Well, I mean, that's a statement. Okay. Who was no, the not, no, uh, no, that's the recommendation. I'm saying to unfounded because, again, there's not, it's, it's you know, there's no, uh, the review of mitigation shows the act did not occur over misconstrued. And if he doesn't have to require it according to the, to the language of the bargaining so unit, you're changing the, that, the, you're yeah, changing I'm, the just like we did before, I'm changing yeah. the recommendation okay. to unfounded. Okay. Instead. Right. I'll second. second. Steve. Okay. Well, thank you, Steve. And all those in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Ma'am, nay, one nay. One nay. One nay. Jason. Uh, uh, give me just a moment. I just want to okay. Okay. I vote in favor of the motion. Perfect. Thank you. So that's, that's one nice. Thing. All right. Um, complaint three. It is alleged that Captain Ortiz abused his powers and allowed a non-city employee, retired Miami Police Lieutenant Rafael Borado, to fly the city's three million dollar helicopter. This benefited retirement Lieutenant Borado by allowing him to accumulate flight hours, which is extremely expensive to get in the private sector. Captain Ortiz is retired Lieutenant Barato's close friend, and he, is, and he is head of the aviation section. And that, uh, you're asking for time. Right. Open, right? Yes, I did get flight records that show that the last flight noted was before the day before um, the lieutenant retired. Um, this is not my area of expertise. There's probably other records. And so we're asking for an extension um, until after the, within 60 days after the I file was okay. I move to extend. Is that it? All those in favor? Okay. okay. Motion passes. Complaint four. Captain Ortiz is not following my new police department order department orders with regard to the number of hours and off-duty jobs he works. As the commander of the off-duty office and Marine Patrol unit, Captain Ortiz is alleged to have manipulated the system and abused his powers by going over the allotted maximum off-duty and regular work hours. So, uh, you, we discussed this at one of the meetings, and you guys okay to subpoena to, uh, to get the University of Miami uh, payroll records. So, we obtained those. We also obtained his on and off duty records and FOP, FOP hours um, from the documents that were received and reviewed. Um, 
They're primarily between the dates of January 2nd, 2017 and August 19th, 2019. Several violations were noted. Um, I'm going to take you over to this that I believe everybody was provided a copy of. Um, I had created a spreadsheet um, marking the off-duty details that he has, was said to have worked. Um, the original spreadsheet also had union time um, and, and uh, anything else that I could find. But we, we narrowed it down to the spreadsheet. Uh, the green uh, shows possible violations of department orders, uh, primarily where he worked in excess of 16 hours in a day or 36 hours in a week pursuant to the department orders. The red shows that he worked um, two or more jobs the same day at the same times, uh, but different jobs. And the purple shows um, where the city did not receive surcharges that are required by department orders for off-duty hours worked. So, for example, on the first page, um, it shows that he worked at both Echo Brickell and at University of Miami, and that he worked that week 38 hours, which is in excess of the 36 hours in a week. So it's in green, and it cites the DO there. If you go down to the, the third line for January 10, 2017, it shows that he was working at Echo Brickell and at the University of Miami. And records show that he started both at 7 a.m., that he worked at Echo Brickell for 12 hours and was paid for that, and that he worked at University School of Medicine for eight hours and was paid for that. Um, if you keep going to the right, it'll show that that was 20 hours, which is more than the 16 hours uh, allowed for by department orders. So you have the red and the green on this one. And then as you go through it, you get to the purple, which appears mostly at the end. And those are the ones where there was no record that there had been payment for the surcharges to the city of Miami. When you say that there has been no failure for the surcharge, that means that it wasn't on record with the events department? I mean, with the, with the city. With the city? Okay. So the audit, actually, it was the auditor's office, Rich. Rich, give it to me again, the auditor's office. It was with the auditor's office that it doesn't show he paid the, the surcharges were paid? And that's my note that I, have. I was waiting for you to finish. When we, in the, in the, that's correct. Because we need to put it in there as well that it's a city ordinance, not just a departmental regulation. Yes. Um. Uh, I just want to make sure I understand. The kind of perspective on, for example, January 10th, 2017, what? Mm -hmm. You're saying that he billed and was paid for being in two places at the same time? Yes. Is it possible that one of those jobs, I mean, if I go up and yell that again, um, one of those jobs could be that he, he didn't have to be there, but with a call, he was still able to come back and forth. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that the case? But, uh, this is the uh, allegation I want to address, if I may, and then you can ask questions as you said. May I? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is the question. Because, and this is the reason, probably the number one reason why these cameras are here today. This allegation accuses a captain of the Miami Police Department of stealing from the city of Miami. You're basically saying not just policy violations, but that he was getting paid for work he did not do. And that is defamatory. You have defamed him. This investigation in this draft form made it to the Miami Herald with his picture. And all the allegations are there talking about how he... Uh, took money uh, for work that he did not do, and these surcharges and all, uh, were not paid to the city. 
I have written a letter. I have some exhibits to that letter. I will provide it to the panel as soon as I'm done speaking. I have emailed it to the investigator as well. But this is, this is really wrong, and this panel needs to correct it because it is defamation per se. On its face, you are accusing a captain of stealing, of committing a crime. And that's as, as far as you need to go. One example in the Miami Herald article, and it's cited in this spreadsheet, is Kaye Ocho, that he worked 27 hours. There aren't 27 hours in a day, so you're saying that he stole money, he overbilled from the city. You need to get the right records from the city. I will provide it. His actual payment from the city to ADP to Captain Ortiz was not for 27 hours. He got it for 10 and a half hours, the time that he worked there. You can see the city of Miami payroll. I have it, easy enough to get through public records, that he worked 10 and a half hours on that day. It all works. These are easy things to do. As to the who's in charge of the, of the surcharges and, and, and what the city is meant to get paid uh, to manage the off-duty details. There was a record of formal counseling issued to the administrative sergeant, not Captain Ortiz. Captain Ortiz is not in charge of doing the administrative surcharge paperwork. A sergeant is an administrative sergeant. It is assigned. That sergeant was given a record of formal counseling explaining that your schedule, which is probably where the spreadsheet goes wrong, that the schedule doesn't match the payments to the officers. So I can have you scheduled for Mondays for the last three years, but you, you traded days or switched to a different, uh, different detail. If you look at the schedule, you're still showing up for a detail at Echo Park or Calle Ocho or wherever else it is. But you didn't overbill or steal time or double dip or whatever the terms may be because you didn't get paid for it. So not only do you have to show that Captain Ortiz or any officer didn't show for an off-duty detail, you then have to prove that that officer who didn't show got paid. Then you can accuse someone of stealing time. You can't do it by saying, well, it's on the schedule, and you're on the schedule somewhere else, therefore you were double dipping. That's unfair, and that's defamatory because Captain Ortiz did not do any of that. He did issue this record, uh, uh, he did initiate the record of formal counseling, and there were corrections that were made. Corrections that were made to the surcharges. You will see page after page an amendment to the surcharges, amended surcharge, by the administrative captain, particularly mostly the University of Miami School of Medicine, which is Captain Ortiz's regular off-duty detail, which is typically that he does on a Friday. But there are people on the schedule that have been terminated from the Miami Police Department that are on the schedule. They're not, that officer was not getting paid. So you can't say that former officer worked it and also got paid. There are other mis uh, corrections that needed to be made. They were made. Uh, you will see emails that are, I will provide to you. Emails that show Captain Ortiz saying, by the way, Administrative Sergeant, you need to get your act together on this. It sends the message that people are in two different places at the same time getting paid two different, two different times. Uh, it has gone through several other, other things, uh, other, uh, through the whole system. What I want to make clear, and very clear, is I'm glad that you're saying that this is a new civilian investigative panel that wants to be a little more simpatico with the police department. But this one right here, a lawyer has to show up for him. And cameras are here, because right before Thanksgiving, the Miami Herald says Pro finds Miami Police Union abused off-duty jobs, and when you read it, it accuses him of stealing from the city. When, it, when public records, this isn't, this isn't Columbo, this isn't I have special powers, this is you ask for the right documents, you get them. And before you put it in writing and lay it down, you, you get these documents. And that's why I'm here today. You need to, you've had a couple of these questions, how does it work? And 
you need to know how it works before you, you before you accuse some uh, police officer of a crime. That's why I am here today. Mr. Chair, can I just are not accusations that are being made by the CIP. This was a complaint that was filed by an individual. It's noted in the public record. The CIP is obligated under the city ordinance to investigate those complaints. There is no defamation that is being made by the CIP. It is simply following the legal guidance and the legal requirements that it is required. Same thing as any voting that would be taking place. I don't want this in, and I don't want this to be seen as a attempt to chill the members from voting on this. You are obligated to vote um, under the law. You are your board members. If, if you unless you have a conflict, you are obligated to vote on this. And I don't want this to be seen as a chilling uh, of that. This is not defamation. It is an accusation that was made by someone other than the CIP. The CIP is proceeding with its investigation as it's legally required to do. The, C the cameras are not here as a result of the CIP. In fact, my understanding is they're here as a result of a press release that was put out by someone other than the CIP. So, yes, they are here. No, it is not defamation on the, on the part of the CIP. And in fact, if that were to be, have been be brought in a court of law, it would be met with a motion for sanctions as being frivolous. It may, I'm not saying it's not defamation by someone else, but it is not defamation by this body. Let me say this. The draft report says, uh, for conclusion, uh, It makes a recommendation. For Captain the Ortiz yes. has not only repeatedly violated policy, but also violated the core values of the Miami Police Department. Therefore, we recommend the allegation of misconduct be sustained. So there is a recommendation that he has undercut the core values paired with the allegation that he is stealing money from the city. This would be akin to alleging that an IA investigation and a finding that it makes is defamation. It is an obligation of the CIP to investigate these complaints. We cannot ignore them. They have to be investigated. And there is a recommendation that comes from the investigator that goes to the panel. The panel may or may not take that investigation as you have heard today and they will make their own decision and give everything their own weight including the investigators recommendation I, I, I'll so I just want to clear up this is not defamation just by the fact that they are following their legal requirements to proceed with an investigation I, I do want to add something though uh, to our question actually Elizabeth have you received the information that you just talked no. about so now that you come forward with that information and you give that information to us we definitely doesn't mean that we're accusing and we're just what he said investigating something that was brought upon us we have the correct information we will vote accordingly we're not accusing him we have this information we're going to say well maybe you know not not so fast buddy I, differently. I appreciate okay. that i've emailed it to you earlier today i will leave the paper copy you, you with just you now. send it today i sent what today you sent the information just today yeah you know this investigation's been over for almost six months okay but but your conclusion, you're, yeah. How come you don't have it then? Well, I'm asking you why you didn't. How come you don't have it? Well, I mean, we all want to pretend wait, 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 like this isn't an allegation. From parliament, again, from a parliamentary procedure, there are requirements in Robert's rules that that discussions are not personal attacks. I want to make sure that this discussion stays where it is supposed to be amongst everyone within uh, this complaints committee, and that we comply with Robert's rules. Um, I just want to make sure that everyone is aware that personal attacks are not permitted under Robert's rules or, frankly, in any in any board. Uh, what do you mean that is a personal attack? I mean, that a personal attack. But I, I'm saying, as we always do, we send out information and notices to obviously the officers and their information. I believe Mr. Ortiz responded to say, I'll show up to the meeting, but I'm not going to provide any other information. If you had information that would help your client earlier on that could somehow cure this de defamation, why didn't you just send it along and collaborate? Because we trust that when someone says they're investigating it, that you're going to find the public records that are available with the city of Miami. The only time we get a true notice that there was a problem is when this comes true out. No what do you mean by true a notice? A problem. You should have easily, your investigator should have easily concluded this allegation is, is frivolous because he didn't work 27 hours for Calle Ocho, and he didn't double bill Echo Park, and he didn't do any of these things. These are the records. You're going to look at the records and go, okay, this is a non-starter. And what I'm saying, you're saying, why didn't I give it sooner? I didn't know you didn't have these records. And I think your investigators should provide, have these records because, like I'm saying, these records, I didn't find them in, in microfiche in the bottom of a, of a library somewhere else. These are kept with the city of Miami. So if you do public records requests on a regular basis, I would assume 
you're going to get all this. And when you review it, you go, oh, well, this is also the same way you didn't sustain the last two. I, you would you would trust that, that your investigator would tell you. And the good news is that only what comes out of today is just a recommendation. So uh, anything that's provided to uh, the, the CIP um, uh, I, I will be investigated and should be presented at the full panel meeting. Um, we can discuss it here today, but I want to make sure that you guys are aware that no final decision would my, be made. My, the CIP, my, so. I'm not, I don't want to quibble with counsel over, over what is defamation that would survive a motion to dismiss in court. I'm saying you have. I'm saying when you put a recommendation without the full and complete investigation. I'm speaking as a human to other to other humans. When you do that, it hurts because this is what happens. The reason I, mean, I just want to mention that since you're providing it today, it, it will be considered. I just don't want you to think it's not. I mean, I, I have no doubt. I'm just their lawyer. I'm not their investigator, but I want to make sure that you're aware that it's once it's pr provided that it does get. Um, investigated and I am the investigator, and I did ask for everything. All right. I can only, I'm only as good as what I'm providing. This, this, this one thing I wanted to mention is actually two things. Um, we have had we have an ongoing issue with the city of Miami Police Department in terms of giving us the records timely, giving us the correct records. This, is, not, not, this is something that's been going on for a while. Okay. Um, we we are we are we discussed different avenues. Mr. Rojas is looking into this right now with the chief, if I'm not mistaken. This is something that's been going on. Okay. Um, now, in terms of a recommendation, when you see the word recommendation, it's just a recommendation from staff to us. By the way, every single case, every officer has been invited to participate, provide records, give us anything that maybe, because we're having issues with the police department, maybe the officer might have access, easier access to them. They're always been welcome and encouraged to provide them. This is all this is. This is all that's going on here. Today. There's now in terms of defamation, I agree with them. We haven't defamed anybody. We have we didn't bring this allegation before the CFP. So that said, I think that based on the fact that he has more information in this case, I think we should be ready to vote in this case. Betsy, are you certain you don't have what he is showing, first and foremost? I, I saw what he was thumbing through. But no, I would have if I had stuff that said otherwise, I would have said no. Yes. So, well, how much time do we have on this? None. None? So we would have to put it in the main... Or you could put it off until after the internal affairs investigation. Is there any way of tolling it? Yes. With, put it off till the end of the show, after the internal affairs is done. Yes, let's toll it. So that, why don't we do that and yeah. make a motion for that thing? Like before, before, before you make a motion, oh, Mr. Mr. Chair, I ask you... Yes, go ahead, sir. From you, your uh, experiences in working on the extra duty, project that this office issued recently, mm -hmm. yep. which surrounded all of those issues. The counselor has brought up some very good points regarding the record keeping, which we would benefit as, a, as an agency overseeing this process. But counselor, are you able to clarify some of the statements that you made regarding a schedule? What specifically a schedule would entail? Are you referring to his regular duty schedule? Are you referring to his uh, special events unit schedule? Can you clarify that, please? Uh, my schedule varies. and uh, Same with the uh, extra duty assignment schedule. I know that the police department has been working hard at looking at third party vendors in order to correct the issue. Um, the schedule that's presented on a, on a permanent assignment um, let's say on a 30-day job, <coughs> the system only allows us to submit a seven-day schedule, let's say Sunday through Saturday. So you can't put, each, for each month, I'm sorry, for each week, you can't put different people. So if I'm shown working every single Monday, then it's going to show me every single Monday of every single week. And so if I am not working that Monday, the city will still get their money as far as their surcharges, but there might be another officer that's working the job. That would be corrected when they're doing the surcharges, but once it is uploaded into the system, we no longer have a way of changing it. That's one of the issues that we're dealing with right now. And specifically, which system are you referring to? Is that the Kronos system? Is that well, well, the issue is there's so many different systems which is that right now the, the goal is to be able to incorporate all of them. So if there's an officer that's working on duty, they would not be able to work uh, another assignment. 
things like that. So it is active to be worked on. But the work schedule that you're referring to, is that Kronos, your regular schedule? Your regular well, we also have schedule. now a staffing program. We have a new staffing program. Which one is so, that? Um, I forgot what it's Kronos. called. But no, it's not Kronos. Mm -hmm. We have a staffing program that's done. On, it can be updated on a daily basis. But Kronos is only submitted uh, every two weeks. So it's not real time. And the seven-day cycle that you're referring to? That's in the off-duty track. That's which track. is what we're going to revamp. <laughs> so are you, Okay, the proprietary. Yes, the opportunity track. And an officer has the ability, any officer, to go in and make adjustments to that off duty track system? No, because once you submit a 30 day schedule, which really is only a week, but it just repli you know, duplicates it, there isn't a way of putting different people. Who has access to make the entries in that system? No, that's just the way that it's built. But the off-duty tracking system. Whoever is, is the coordinator or whoever you designate to do the administrative functions. And the off-duty jobs that you're listed at uh, in the spreadsheet, were you the job coordinators for those particular job sites? Yes, but I have an administrative sergeant. That's the one that deals with the the day-to-day -day affairs so as far as updating the report. But that would be at the special events unit. No, he's just a regular sergeant. We have a lot of jobs, so. There's no way that office could happen. And I think that's where some of the misconceptions. Who makes the actual entry into the track system that an officer works whatever number of hours at any particular job site? It all depends on what type of event it is. Uh, if it's a permanent job, it's usually done by a coordinator or a or a administrative a supervisor under that coordinator. If it's a special event, it's usually handled by the special events unit. And the individual that has access to the track system, is there an audit trail for that to determine when the entries are made with a timestamp and when they're amended? I wouldn't be able to answer that. That's a question for IT. I'm not but, sure. But you would be the one to make the entries for your job coordinating. I, I, yes, it's... but you just asked me if there'd be a track or a history. That an audit trail. trail. I, I have no idea. Thank you. IT, that's something IT would. So for the UM job, you were the job coordinator. Would you go then back and put those in track? I have an administrator that takes care of the administrative paperwork. And this, that would be the same for ECHO? Yes. And the administrator that you have, your assistant, are you referring to that administrator in the role as SEU, or is that some other? No, just a supervisor from the street. Or it could even be an officer. It all depends on what type of job it is. Is that within the department order for anyone to, to make those? The department orders just states that uh, in order to work a job, it can't be someone of lesser rank. So in order for me to work a job, I have to be shown as the coordinator. A uh, sergeant can't work a job that's coordinated by an officer, so it's something that needs to be eventually updated once they change but the system. But you're a captain now. Correct. And you've taken roles as a lieutenant for jobs, extra duty jobs. We can, correct. It's under the department orders. And We're talking about uh, singular jobs. So a job that would just be an officer, officer, sergeant, lieutenant, captain. Or Special events, pop-up. Uh, Events, things of that nature that are temporary, not permanent? Or not, I wouldn't work in officer position for those. The lowest I would go is to lieutenant. It all depends on demand and if they have someone to cover it. And if they have someone to cover it, well, first of all, where does the job go through? Does it actually come into the special events unit first? Depends. Somebody comes in off the street, I need two cops to work with them. Usually that's the way it works. And that's the office that you're assigned to? No, I'm assigned over a whole section. At any point, were you an uh, officer in charge of special events? No. I'm in charge of a section. I don't. Special events is one of the units under my command. It's in that section. Right, but there's, we have like 160 something people, so. But over you have, a lot of things. You, you've made references and other issues that have come before the panel regarding uh, special events units and people that come in to make uh, applications and permits. Those would have to come across your desk, wouldn't they? No, that would stop uh, with a unit commander, which is a lieutenant of police that works on it. So if I wanted to fly a drone at Ultra, and I needed a permit to do that, that would it come through your office? A drone? A drone. You would be getting it from the FAA. And not special events. Special events has nothing to do with that. No. I know that there was an ordinance that was then claimed, as well it was deemed unconstitutional. And the amendments, Council, that you referred to the surcharges, when were those amendments made? Uh, the dates are on it, and 
mostly, I think, September. And the amendments, are those made by the job coordinator or somebody else? That was made by the administrator, part, and Does it's indicated. There's been many references. Does this mysterious sergeant have a name? Yes, he does. Would you? Do we uh, have it? Max, Max Valdez. And it's on the document. And would those entries be dated as well as to when the original entries were made and the amendments? I think you should look at it, but it's uh, it might be handwritten on, on there with a signature. And, with, and the handwritten, would that also be on the UM uh, timesheets as well, or is that done through another system as to determine when an officer is physically pre present at the UM facility? Uh, we subpoenaed all that. Yeah. You guys subpoenaed all that. I, I don't... But my, my, my big question is, I know that that's why it happened here, but my question is for the investigators, and you guys aren't investigators, I don't think it takes much that if I accuse you of working 27 hours at an event that's run by the city of Miami, the first thing I'm going to try to do is what? Pull the paycheck. Pull the payroll. And none of that was done, so it was, it was very disheartening to read as if I stole 27 hours of time on on that. And I'm also, hold on, I have another question. Did you ever pull the payroll from Echo Brickle? No. No, but you did say, you did say that I got paid this day and I got that day, which means that I'm stealing. And you have absolutely no proof and no evidence that I ever took any money. That's why I'm here today. You can accuse me, you can accuse me of whatever you want. But you must have, hold on. You, you asked me to speak, so I am. You must have some evidence. And so I had no problem coming here in front of you guys. I don't respect them. I respect you. There again, is, again, again with, with the personal attacks. It's not a personal attack. It's not a personal I'm sorry. attack. It's fact. I'm, I'm sorry. It's fact. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. We're, we're here to make presentations. I mean, you can talk about the investigation in general, but when you're talking about you don't respect a specific person, it the is a personal attack. The investigation is a sham. I have not stolen any money, and anybody with half a brain would know that if you're going to accuse someone of stealing, you're going to pull the payroll. You're going to pull those paychecks. I didn't work no 27 hours. I don't even I think, I didn't work most of this time. Captain, so, Captain, I appreciate. It. I appreciate what you're saying. Everything. Trust me. I appreciate you letting me know, and 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 we will we will continue to investigate. Right, well, I hope that this gets investigated thoroughly. Yes, Maybe will. someone else should be put on it. Sir. And Somebody this is. should not be going in front of any full panel until it's been fully investigated, especially with the evidence that that, that has been presented to you today. And that's what we discussed, or we're going to... Um, we're tolling it. We're tolling it until we get it's completed. And then we'll have a different but, outcome, I'm sure. But also, just you know, this is the process in every case. In every situation, we... The, the, Cases come here, the officers are invited to show up and provide evidence that maybe an investigator missed or maybe that it wasn't available to us. Who gave this to the Miami Herald? Who it wasn't us. It wasn't us. No, it wasn't us. So it was, how did they get a draft? Where the draft was uploaded? When we uh, we sent out the agenda to everyone. It's open record. The point is, it is fully completed. The recommendation gets perpetuated in the media. And that's what I'm saying. That's what you have to, as a process, and if you're, if you're being <laughs> full and complete, uh, honest, and saying, well, we don't want to hurt people that didn't well, do anything wrong. Let me clear so up my misconception. Yeah. This is a uh, department in the city of Miami. Everything that we do, whether it be open or closed, is an open record. So we could be halfway through an investigation. If someone requests it, they receive it. So I don't there's want to something, do there's, there's a right. difference between a retired uh, a police officer making an allegation, and then when you put the stamp of your organization, your panel, recommending, well then it adds credence. No, no, no. no, no. It it was, it was, the, recommendation, the recommendation gets done after the panel gets gets all the information. But the, one of the things, sir, yeah. sir, yeah. one of the things that we continue, continue to asking for is for more information from that department. And if we ask for three things, we get point five. And if right. you and you if ask you, for a lot of things, and if, well, and and if you get point five, you ask for more. But here's the you thing. Know? Here's 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 my my argument. You should, get it. you should get it, and that's between you and whoever you're dealing with. But if you For don't sure. get it, even in properly, if you have a lack of information, you still can't recommend an officer as a lack of evidence. Sometimes we say not sustain or unfounded, but that's neither here nor there. I think we're kind of. I think we're saying the same thing. Except <laughs> I want to say, I just want to say, when you when, when an investigator puts a recommendation down and you don't have all the evidence, 
there's not a, a, an intellectual curiosity by the media that digs in and goes, well, what evidence did they? They just read that an investigator is going to a panel and saying that he is undercuts the, the core of the values of the Miami Police Department. And then this article. But, that's, but they're also going to read that you say payroll, but that doesn't, that only generally speaks to something. Right, but now, that happens, city payroll. but now that happens afterwards. And when you attach yeah. an Excel spreadsheet sure, as a draft, let me finish the sentence. It, we're, we're talking about private vendors. This captain works for private vendors, yes? That's not the city of Miami. He's not getting paid by the city of Miami. Guy Ocho was ADP, which is through the that's city one. of Miami. That's one. Okay, well, I mean, <laughs> we're talking I about mean, that's one of the main things what that I'm accused of working 27 hours when you, I only got paid. You just asked us if we had the records from Echo. Can you provide us with all the vendors that you work for, all your payrolls, all your stuff? The vendors, yeah. hold on, you have a copy of the vendors that I've worked for. The vendors, but not the not your pay from You're the vendors. You're absolutely right. That's You're right. absolutely right. But let me ask you this Good. question. How does an investigator sit here and, and tell the board, tell the board, he got, yep, he got paid this day and he got that paid that day. That means that I, that I double dipped, that I stole, that I was working two jobs. That is what she said. And she doesn't have a lick of evidence to prove that. So when you attach an Excel spreadsheet like that and it comes out in the paper on Thanksgiving Day, it is extremely troubling. She could have very easily not attached this Excel spreadsheet to this packet as part of the agenda, sent out to whoever, and then it could have been something that was discussed today. But it wasn't, and it came out of her mouth. Oh no, he, he, he got paid both times. How do you know that? You don't know of any of those jobs, especially Echo Brickle. Well, actually, in the yeah. report, she explains how she came to those conclusions. So, right, but that's not what she just Now, if you disagree reported. with the report, that's one thing, but to say that she kind of pulled it out of thin air would be an exaggeration. An exaggeration. Mm -hmm. She did not say that I got paid for both days. Well, well, once again, you're highlighting one discrepancy. I understand if that is something that's inaccurate. But if I called whole, you a thief, well, can, I, can I finish? If I called you a thief, I you'd be I upset too. You can. No. You'd be upset too if you were called a thief. I've been Whether called. it's a penny or ten thousand dollars. I understand. We're not going to get anywhere with this conversation. Mr. Chairman, yes. first of all, um, thank you for coming in, Captain, and the Chancellor as well. Earlier, you asked whether or not we were open-minded. I'm probably the second newest member of the panel. I can tell you that I and many of my colleagues are absolutely open-minded. Um, we get staff's recommendations. We don't always go to staff's recommendations. I think even in your case and some of the prior um, allegations, we didn't go to staff's recommendations in other cases. The way the process works, and I know it's been alluded to and discussed a little bit, this is really the first time any part of the panel has had an opportunity to consider this particular case. You're right, there's been an investigation, and the allegations that are made are, are pretty quite alarming. At the same time, today you've appeared and your attorney has provided a letter which they haven't seen, again, for the first time we're seeing it, still haven't seen it, or the attachments. But your attorney's represented that it's evidence that proves that these things that are being said about you are not true. So, as a panel member, I'm telling you, I'm extraordinarily open-minded about this. I haven't formed any conclusions or opinions whatsoever, just to note that um, the, what, what the documents have been represented is quite concerning to me. Um, so, hopefully, we'll have a chance to extend this out a little further. We can get to the bottom of it. Let me just ask counsel, the documents that you were referring to, those attachments, what are they? Those payroll records? What are, what are those described as? What are they? I explained what they are. One is the IAO show, one is the payroll, the actual pay stuff. This is confusing. This is the script. Uh, the re reprimand, uh, counseling. The ones that are dealing with uh, showing that he, was, that he wasn't paid for working multiple shifts. Well, Jason, if I could elaborate, it looks as though council has pro provided a lot of different surcharge reports, so that may help us clear up the purple on the chart, as well as the Kai Ocho incident, um, and then the written reprimand for the surcharges. So it seems though a litany of the information provided deals with the surcharge um, situations, mm -hmm. and the no, my, one... My question is, what, what are they? Are that, they that's what stubs? Are they... The, no, it's just the payable right. There's no I'm, I'm asking the council because they're his documents. Okay. What are you describing this? Not every document, just the ones that <coughs> seem to be the, the allegation. So you have the payroll records. Yeah, have payroll records for Calle Ocho. Another from the city of Miami? Yes. Do you know what department? 
payroll department? I've never seen yeah, payroll. Yeah, payroll, and then you have the actual pay stub for the actual amount that Mr. Uh, Captain Martinez paid for that. The record of formal counseling to the administrative sergeant. Give me a pen. And then you have the office of department work schedule, special events for each officer. So you see that it's not even on the schedule except for uh, Fridays at the University of Miami. And, uh, and then you see adjustments for monthly surcharge reports, which were amended. And <coughs> then you see emails uh, reviewing those from Captain Ortiz to the Hey guys, uh, Mr. Block is speaking. Can you listen to those questions, please? We're having a, I understand, but what, what documents um, do you have that show that that's not the case? That he wasn't paid for both of these? I don't, we don't have the echo brickle. There, those, those don't exist. The University of Miami schedule is really provided. Okay. So these non-city ones apparently um, don't exist. I can't so give you checks that don't exist. I, I, those Did you days, get paid cash? Those days. Was it hold cash? on, hold on. I, you, I've Rich. answered every Rich. question that you've had. No, I, I know oh. you think that there, there's this, this, this misperception that there's cops out there working all these cash jobs. No. Echo Brickle is uh, it's 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 with um, I can't remember the name of the construction company. Moriarty. It's a very large construction company. So no, it's all paid by check. John Moriarty. There you go. Okay. And 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 just to show you, since I know, like you said, my name's come up quite a bit here. Uh, I know that I'm always under a microscope, and I'm aware of that. But besides being under a microscope, I would never do anything to tarnish my image or question my integrity or put my career or my liberty on the line. And so another thing that an investigator would have done, see what jobs I checked into on the radio. Because I can tell you, I check in every single time. Is that the only record of uh, checking Rich, in? Through, through the chair. Oh, every, every, the process. every single time that I work an extra duty assignment, I check in and I check out. And if I go to an emergency call, which that's another allegation. I advise. So I follow the rules. I follow the rules. I know that there's documentation. And again, if I did something wrong, okay, I'll own up to it. But to say that I got paid double and there's you have absolutely no evidence of that, I don't have anything to provide you because right. I never worked that right, job Kevin, at those times. And thank you. I just want to understand. So the kinds of documents that you're referring to, can we request did staff request those documents? From Echo Brickle? No. We have, <coughs> we requested from the city, we requested from UM, and we requested... You can't request public records from the private company. Requested his on and off duty records from the city, his FOP hours through the city, and then we subpoenaed the University of Miami information. And work schedules. And his work schedules. All right. So did that include the payroll records the council was referring to? We did get a lot of payroll records. I just I have to go back over them now because Kaya Ocho, which is one that's come into question, I believe I have payroll records for that. I'm not positive, but I have re I have records that show this. And most of what I went off of with the city was maybe not actual payroll records because it was from the auditors, but it was records that showed that we were So I have to go back and look at that. Okay, and Mr. Trial, finish up. I just want to say, please, it is true we, you know, some, we hear reports that sometimes staff request records and don't get them timely. We alluded to that. I don't know that that's what happened in this case or not, but hopefully during this time, if, if we agree to postpone this, we can all get to the bottom of it and have some more clarity as to what's really going on. We will postpone this as of right now. Um, well, you can vote on it. Yes, please. Make a motion to close. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 A
Right. Complaint five. It is alleged two statements made by Captain Ortiz to FDLE. This is the one that Captain Ortiz just referred to related to a police involved shooting on October 6, 2017, that the abandoned post at the University of Miami and engaged in an off-duty vehicle pursuit in an unmarked city vehicle, and by doing so, he neglected his duties and responsibilities for of providing safety to the students at the medical campus. And we've got some information here, and but staff is recommending that this one be told until the IA investigation is closed and we receive a file. Okay. Move. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, next allegation. And um, Rich, there's a PowerPoint. Okay. Can you get to that, please? Uh, the allegation, Captain Ortiz continues to violate social media policy by posting on Twitter offensive Photoshop images and memes of Commissioner Joy Chocorello and on Facebook photographs of police activity, including a photograph of a subject in handcuffs sitting on a roadway curb. A review of the post provided from Facebook shows a single posting from the account of Pablo Ortiz dated June 3rd, 2014, and it's captioned outstanding work regarding today's police pursuit, taking two robbers off the streets in Miami. And that is this one right here. Now keep in mind that this is from a post from 2014. Then we reviewed the posts that were provided from the Twitter account, the Javier Ortiz FOP. The majority of the posts appear to be related to Captain Ortiz's ongoing public issues with Commissioner Joe Carroyo. And this is going to be slides four through eight. Just go slow, Rich, so that they can read them. Uh, Rich, can you play slideshow? Okay. Yeah. And again, this is um, what was provided to us. I don't have a Twitter account, so. I don't follow you. I think I attempted it. You never accepted me. <laughs> what, to follow me? Yeah. No. Well, this account at least. Come up with you. Request me. I'll, I'll accept you. I love everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Even on Crespo. No, you know. You you're know. banned? Well, you're banned from all city computers. So. You're banned. <laughs> Rich, play slideshow. Oh. It's at the, it should be at the bottom, right? Move those. I, can, I know I can't get those out. Okay, well then you go to the top where it says uh, home. View to the right, far right. Hit view. It says slideshow. Go to slideshow. And then just hit slideshow. Oh yeah, slideshow. There it is. You see it next to view or review. I mean, I'm sorry. Next to animations. Up. Uh, up. There you go. From the beginning. Okay, now we can go to slide three was the one from 2014. And these are the ones of Joe Carroyo. It'll be slides four, five, six, seven, and eight. These were just samples of them. And there was a single post directed to former CIP member Danny Suarez, which will be the next one. Also included in the complaint were other pictures from Captain Ortiz's Instagram, Javi, FOP20, and Twitter showing officers in uniform, showing himself in uniform with Mayor Francis Suarez and hurricane relief and hurricane efforts. And I didn't put those on the slides. Staff finds that Lieutenant Ortiz's social media pages contain derogatory language and images about Commissioner Corio and Mr. Suarez and may, uh, may be perceived to ridicule, malign, disparage, or reflect behavior that would reasonably be considered careless or irresponsible. So we recommend that this conduct be sustained based on the social media networking DO that you have in your package. Mr. Chair, quick clarification. Yeah, you refer to Mr. Suarez. Are you referring to the mayor or somebody else? Danny Suarez. Danny Suarez. He used to be a member. Which, which one are you? No, the he's last one. Over the last slide. Yeah. He used to be a member here. How do you respond to this? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, those are all uh, union accounts. I'm the district director of the Fraternal Order of Police. And uh, 
One of them was from 2014. I was the union president at the time, taking photographs that anybody from the public could have taken. It was on a public sidewalk. And they were taking bad guys off the street. Um, the ones revol involving Commissioner Joe Arroyo. It uh, has to do with one of the representatives, and I also sit on the executive board for the Miami Police Department's <coughs> Return Order Police. And I also cover all the collective bargaining units of the FOP for South Florida. And so just because, uh, first of all, I don't find anything derogatory. Uh, there's no profanity. There's no mention of the Miami Police Department. There's no pictures or anything of, of me in uniform when those remarks are made. This is strictly being made under my first amendment protections as well as, of course, the statute 447, which are, concert, are, are my union activities in concert with those union accounts. If you read through the DOs, you'll, you'll see that they're to a higher standard. That, that's why I was hoping you would address that, the, the, the standard in the DO. So if I put on Twitter that I don't like the President of the United States, that's derogatory? I'm asking you, because if, if you disagree, if you disagree with not liking the President, which, by the way, I love Trump, but if you, if you disagree with that, then you might find that derogatory. But where does it stop when it comes to the First Amendment protection of someone that is mm -hmm. off-duty, right, you know, off-duty making Steve, remarks on behalf of the union? I'm, yeah. I'm having a conversation with him. No, but, but you're an officer. And posting pictures of Joe Carollo, with a public a, servant, with a dog or something, and, and you're an officer that's supposedly being held to a higher standard. Um, and, and not only that, but you, you hold that you're, you're a ranking member within the FOP. Right. You, you would think that there would be a, 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 at least a different form of behavior that you're putting out there. That, you know, that's your that is your opinion, but I I also believe and I respect that. But I also believe that there's a difference when you're representing the Miami Police Department, and there's a difference when you're representing the Fraternal Order of Police. Is there so when I have when I have the commissioner making remarks on the radio that he's going to disarm the Miami Police SWAT team who are FOP members, as an FOP representative, if I make remarks regarding what he has said, what that's considered derogatory. No, so, no, no. So if now, thing, but what, that, that's clearly something else. This is mocking, this mocking? is taunting, this yes. isn't an opinion. Why? Because I put up, there is a hotline that is a real phone number, by the way. Yeah, but that's not his whole face. I mean, that, that was, that's well, intentional. No, no. And then the, no, actually, the it is his whole face. It is it his whole face. It. it just doesn't fit in the picture. Okay. Well, the and other one, are you going to be in your blues, stolen valor? Like, that's, these are all jokes. Well, actually, mockery, actually, mockery. actually, I was retreating something from a, one of our other FOP pages. And whether you find it, if you don't agree with it or not, one thing is not agreeing with it, and the other is saying that it's derogatory. He has still not shown to this day that he ever wore a uniform. He has never shown to this day that he was a, that, that, he, that he served. He has not shown to this day that he went to boot camp, and that's why we showed up with about 50 of our members, which most of them did serve in the armed so, forces. But so that's one thing, though. That's one thing. That, that's what I wanted to address right there. What you just said is fine. That's different. You because? see the distinction? You do not see that. Which one are you talking about? Either one. I don't think they're derogatory. These, these aren't opinions. These can be seen by others as demeaning, mocking, and not you're for coming of the team. position you're that you're, you're the police I don't have but, a feeling about no, it. No, you're right. You're absolutely passionate. right. I am a captain of the police department. Mm -hmm. But when these are posted, I'm, I'm posting these as an individual and as a representative of the union, not as a captain. captain and hold on, captain that picture right there, captain I guess you're going to find Joe Carroyo substantiated because he's the one that posted that picture captain about Fox. I, I, I have kids. Okay. okay. And, you know, they see something like this. They see that you're a captain of the police department. They see that Joe Carroyo is a commissioner. You know, it, it doesn't look good. You have to see that it doesn't look good. That is your opinion. But there's many that do support the position of the Fraternal Order of Police. Can I just make sure that we, the, the discussion is framed correctly? Because I know we've talked about derogatory, but it, the DO doesn't speak exclusively in terms of being derogatory. I know it's extremely broad. It's whatever. I mean, it's just like well, when you charge I, somebody with, with improper procedure. It's a really broad DO that you can. It's any way that you want to perceive it. So.
I'm glad we're having this conversation. So I just want to make sure that the panel members that we're framing this like legally so that we're having the correct discussion. What? It's like describing porn, but we're not describing porn. Describing porn? No, I don't. No, no, it's just, no, it's, just, it's, just, it's, just it's, it's a standard. Like, it's a standard, but we don't know. <laughs> That's a different standard. I'm not putting a penis or a dildo there. It's no, a picture <laughs> of a military. I think, I think what he's saying is that sometimes people say, like, when we say there's a standard that we use when we're assessing porn, I may not know how to articulate it, but I know it when I see it. That's the standard that is commonly used. To discuss these types of things. Mr. Chair? Yes. Yeah, so a couple of things. One is. Actually, I have. Well, go ahead. 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 I have a little bit of an issue with we're taking bad guys off the street. There's a due process issue. Like, there's a lot there. And you were in a different capacity arresting someone than just a bystander. I didn't arrest captain. anybody. And that picture was taken when I was full time in the union. It wasn't even as a captain of police. I was completely on off duty release from the police department. And no, I didn't arrest anybody. That was a picture that anybody could have taken. Did you put in overtime when you showed up at that scene? Rich, Rich, come on. Rich, 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 please ask. I don't know. No, right. public yeah. ask. no that's a good question. Yeah. Just like I'd be at paid cash if right. do a public right. records request, folks, and you'll see folks, that there's folks, no folks. overtime. Everybody, everybody. Okay. Or I will table this whole discussion right now. Okay? Jason. Are we understood? I don't know if you were Does everybody understand me? Yes, sir. Okay, because this is rolling and rolling and rolling. Okay. He said his piece. Everybody's trying to put a, 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 an opinion in. I'll finish it. Okay. Please. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. I, I did it. Mr. Chair, I have asked to be recognized. Yes, no, I understand. I'll, I'll defer to him so we can move. Thank you. So, um, a couple of things. One is, uh, one is these uh, these particular images were not part of our packet. So the first time I've had a chance to see these today, they were sort of flashed very quickly in front of us. Um, glancing through them, some, uh, you know, there's a natural uh, oppositional tendency and. Uh, I think it's perfectly appropriate as a union member to express uh, whatever the advocacy you might need is appropriate to represent your union members. The question is, and this is where the legal issue becomes a little more close for me, is although it's clear and you just close about wearing a uniform and then say captain, you clearly decide to represent the union. So that's, that's important to me. It's also in the background when you pull up my Twitter account and it says, this is from the personal release. Yeah, from my perspective, it's clear that this is not intending to represent itself as a member of the police department, Absolutely as not. a member of the police department. Absolutely not. Um, on the other hand, there is this one part that says that while you're free to do this, um, it shouldn't be to the degree that could impair working relationships for the duty of loyalty. And I'm just wondering, since we're talking about at least in some of these, the commissioner was ultimately part of your ultimate chain of command, um, or, well, they, He's not at all. As a matter of fact, in the city charter... Let me rephrase that. Right. Chain of command, perhaps, is not the wrong, wrong is not the right place. But you can, you can clear this up for me. They are at, you know, towards the apex of the local government, I mean, which the police department serves and is responsible. So, address that in this particular provision. Um, how, do, how does that all work out, I and mean, how does the First Amendment play? Uh, it is a, let me say that it is a complicated question. It's not easy. There are cases like Garcetti in the federal system that talk about, well, are you allowed to show up to the school board meetings and you're a police officer or a district attorney and you go and you say, I don't like what's going on at the school board. I think you're wrong, Commissioner so and so. And you get fired for that and you get disciplined for that. And does it get even more murky when you hold an FOP position? So when you're doing, again, I bring it back to an investigation, you can't just say, well, we don't like what Javi Ortiz says. You have to say, well, where, what was he when he said it? And I don't even mean at what time of day. I mean at the time in 2014, he was the president of the union. A tremendous amount of, of, of flexibility there because you're the president of the labor organization that collectively bargains, which you phrase nicely as there's always an op oppositional type dynamic from time to time. Uh, certainly you can, certainly you, when you get into issues like, hey, this commissioner is not supporting the police department, the budget, the weapons needed for squat, things like these are perfectly, uh, uh, perfectly appropriate things to talk about. What is, what is 
becomes, I guess, an issue, the rub, is that Captain Ortiz, or in this case, Javi Ortiz, is, uh, has, has a certain neck, a certain ability, a certain uh, communication style that Twitter creates and other social media, and it's back and forth, but you really do have to see what he's actually saying, when he's saying it, and is he, when you say he is he disparaging, fine, but is he saying anything that violates a policy? And I think the answer, investigationally, you have to complete it. And second, the answer is no because of who, of what position he held at the time. And then I even will offer you, you know, when you look at these pictures, you can't see people's faces. You can't even tell it's the Miami Police Department in the back. I mean, you really have to take a second and just go, what am I really seeing here? Because when the brain starts making assumptions, well, that, that must be the Miami Police Department. That must be the city of Miami. That might, maybe, maybe not. What I'm saying is, is when you're doing something, like that's my theme of the day, and then you put it in writing and say somebody did something bad, you're going to get called out, and you want your ducks in a row. And that's what I'm of the day. Oh, do you have something? I do have something to say uh, regarding the First Amendment. And I, I, you know, I believe you have a right to say whatever you want. But the unfortunate thing that it's coming from your FOP account, and that's what that's the thing for me. If it was just Javier Ortiz, private citizen, no FOP attached to it, I say go for it, no problems. But because it says FOP, I have an issue with it in that sense. Why? Because it's got nothing to do with the police No, but at the end of the day, it does. Because you're, you're actually talking about, at the end of the day, it does. Because it, you're still representing the police department. And when you, when you attach FOP on it, everybody wants to look at an FOP, just like the PBA is. You're representing those police officers. That's just my personal opinion. I promise I have, you, I promise you that if I put just Javi Ortiz and I took the FOP off, I think the rest of the board is going to not care. Whether it no, says I, FOP or not, they're going to just say that I work for the police department. But and for me, it makes a difference. It's okay. just me. It makes a difference because we know that you are part of the FOP and you're part of the, you know, even though you, it, it's something, you do mention a lot of Miami, that's where I have the issue and that's where I might lean towards the sustainability uh, because of that issue. Otherwise, I do believe in your First Amendment rights. What is your name? Eileen. I'm the chairperson. Eileen, so so if we if we took your position or your what you're saying and then... If I decided to demonstrate with 50 cops in front of City Hall, which would cause a disruption, and it could show disloyalty, what they were speaking about, to a commissioner, and, and it could, in, in a way, in essence, harm any type of relationship, so I don't have the right to demonstrate either. I didn't say that at all. That's exactly what I would say. You're, you have a First Amendment right to do that. But Unfortunately, Joe, but your departmental orders are there, though. It, there's departmental orders about that. Otherwise, it would... There's a saying there that you're, you're um, um, the, the, the social media, there's a lot, there's departments of courts on social media. So I'm going with what they say. Otherwise, it's a, to me, it's a First Amendment right, you're absolutely right. Where but does it say FOP in the, that department? You're still part of the police department, though. That's just, that's just my, and maybe Wait. I'll be convinced against it. No, it's right. fine. I respect your opinion. I just but, that's, but that's the thing. When you, you know, the, the old, you're quoting Supreme Court Justice who said, I, I, I can't describe pornography, but I know it when I see it. You have to, as a matter of if you're going to discipline or recommend discipline to the police chief, you have to have departmental orders that are specific enough, just like any law, that the, a regular person of ordinary intelligence would know that I'm violating it if I, if I do it. You're saying the FOP makes a difference. Fair, fair you know, it's in the, in the moniker, FOP, hobby, or mm -hmm. But if you remove it, somebody else might say, it doesn't matter, you're still a police officer. It, it, it somebody it else. See, and what I'm saying is it makes a difference to me. And, and, and if we get that one vote, I'm sure he'll take it down. <laughs> but, but Or change it. My point is, is when you live... <laughs> okay. No, but, uh, but the point is, is when you are interpreting these rules and saying, is it fair to you know, recommend on the Ortiz, you have to look at those departmental orders and say, are they sufficiently clear to give any police officer, not just uh, the Ortiz, the, the knowledge and understanding that he's violating the deal. I think so. When, when that's the only, this is the only case that we have. No, no. We had a, we had a case of social media before. No, 
No, I know, but it's not like that. It's not like a super common shoe. It's not a common shoe. One or two since I've been here. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's one that's going to grow more comfortable. Um, we're thinking of doing another solution. So. Okay, then shed some light on the first amendment issue versus departmental. Well, I mean, I would say, I mean, you do have First Amendment rights, but you, you enter the police department, and the police department can put res reasonable restrictions on you, and that's what these department orders are. I, I haven't seen them challenged. Uh, in fact, they, they're similar to other orders that I'm aware of. Um, in terms of the FOP communications, I'm not aware that this is the official communication of the FOP. And think, in fact, I believe it is not, because there was a retweet of one that was pointed out before that was from the official FOP uh, account. Um, so I think that there's a distinction. There, it's up to you guys, but I think there's a distinction that can be made between whether this is official FOP or not, or is this just a member of the FOP who is putting this out? Um, because, uh, you know, the, this, I, the, I just point out, I don't think that's necessarily an issue, but I just point that out because that distinction seemed to have been made, and I want to make sure that you guys are aware that there is a official FOP account that was on there. So, uh, but so the, the department, to answer your question, I guess I'm making a short answer long. <laughs> uh, to answer your question, department orders can put restrictions on on some activities, yes. So, just, yeah, you, you would agree that there's some line that um, an officer or other city employee could cross, even in a role as an FOP representative or union representative. Sure. Right? Violence, you know, the Profanity, some hate sure. towards a race or religion. <laughs> no, I'm saying particularly with respect to these issues and this type of other government official, there's a limit to how you can convey right. your message. Commissioner so and so, we should raise arms against them and go to their house, yeah. you know, things like, like that. Like violence or something. Yeah. Right. Of course not. Okay. That would be derogatory. Or, or even short of inciting violence, but across a long line of decency and acceptable behavior. It would work out of these otherwise. And you're getting into a whole thing like fair response. You know, when you get into the First Amendment, you know, you get into what's a fair response. Well, that's the other thing. You've alluded to in some of these cases, at least you're responding to something. Now, we, don't have, we don't have any of that context, so we... The context in short, but I agree with you. That's what I mean by a full timeline, full investigation. Yeah, yes. Is, you know, he, this commissioner allegedly has represented himself as a Marine, and to those former office, those officers that are still consider themselves Marines, but have retired from the Marine Corps, that is offensive <coughs> to misrepresent. So let me just say where I'm at, and if you choose to. I'm, the only one that concerns me is the one that I read. So if you want to, just address to me how, what your response would be if someone were to say, you violated 4511. I'm not sure. <coughs> so there's different types of things. And again, this, this directly re refers to an employee speaking as a private citizen. I think time of, time of day, position within the organization. No, no, I'm okay with okay. that. I'm, right. I'm, I got that. So that's, that's, that's my it, response. It doesn't impair working relationships no, it with actually the is, for which loyalty and confidence are It, it gathers the Supreme Court. It does the opposite. We have a, a union representative, a, a president, a former president, uh, challenging the uh, misrepresentations and attacks of a city commissioner in, a, in, a, in an effective way on social media. How do you guys know he wasn't Murray? <coughs> I'm sorry? How do you guys know he wasn't a Murray? How do we know he wasn't a Murray? Did he provide? Did he he provide mean, that's a little bit separate than this Because I mean, okay. it, seems that it, it seems like his argument rests on the fact that they're able to do this because everyone supports it. But if they support something that's a policy, it wouldn't be a representation. Uh, like let me just let's get through this, and then you want to ask follow-up. Which is, which is the other end of the right. argument, right? right? Because exactly. you're doing the same thing. No, actually, no, because I never said I was a Marine. No, not and I never said I worked for a job. But yeah. you're accusing us of the same thing. That I'm not accusing you of anything. I brought to you the fact that I, you have absolutely no evidence that I worked two jobs, and a representative from your organization right. is so, saying that I double-dipped. So, so do you have evidence of Joe Crow not being a Marine? That's my yeah, problem. Yeah, there was. Okay. There was. That's, that's, he presented a DD-256 which means he was inactive, but there's absolutely no evidence that he ever went to boot camp. There's no evidence he ever had a uniform. There's no evidence that at any, he, he never served. Right. That's so all a lot of times what people would do is that. back in yeah. back in that time in order to, 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 to dodge the Vietnam War, 
what they would do is they wouldn't enlist. You had to be there a minimum of nine months, so you wouldn't get court martialed. Right? They would go out. So that's where this whole thing okay. came from. Okay. Right. Um, somebody needs to take a vote, please. Can I, I just wanted to see the first. Uh, I didn't get a, I didn't get a finished oh, response to my question because we were interrupted. But yeah. you know, we didn't interrupt today. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I. I'm sorry. Not okay. <laughs> That was my, it's an employee are free to express themselves as private citizens. Timeline is important on social media. But then he's a commissioner, is there any element of loyalty? We should have any. You don't have any commissioner to, any loyalty to a specific commissioner, loyalty to the city, loyalty to the union, loyalty to the police department. Um, I mean, is there any... Is there any element of this that there needs to be able to be a professional relationship between the elected leadership and the staff? Please? I think you can, you, you know, what I'm saying is this is the First Amendment sticky wicket of the First Amendment. Here's a, a, you know, we, uh, we can take a poll of the of the union, the police department, and they're going to go, you're probably at most gay, you know, Avi Ortiz stuck it to a city commissioner. Yeah. It's still, yeah. if we, if it incited violence, if it did something, uh, yeah. something extreme, it wouldn't matter, but I'm suggesting to you that you need that evidence. If he says you would need at least that evidence to show a violation of the departmental orders, that it did destroy the esprit de corps. <coughs> okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you. I, I just want a small thing. I will be very brief. The I'm ready to order pizza. Please, I just the I guess when I when we look at the order and we talk about what's harassment or de, um, derogatory or whatever, a, a concern for me when I was looking through this was also asking for the last four digits of the social. So that for me feels like a little that does feel harassing to me. I mean, people can post and say my postmate's order didn't come in, and then that postmate can sue the person who said that. So I just think we need to think about the lines, that when we're talking about these lines, that's a line for me. That's it's kind of dangerous for him. And we'll take it. I just wanted to put, I just wanted it well out taken. there. And, and, and something else also you made me think of. It's also who, who you're talking about. So Commissioner Corio is not a private citizen unit. He is a public, public official. Social security and, and public officials need to. No, it's a, but his social security number isn't. I, I, uh, public, right? Point taken, new okay. paragraph. He's oh, a public okay. Official. <laughs> no, I, was just, I just was making sure. Yeah. Yeah. We're, Thank we're you. all public officials. Yeah. But I think, I but, like but I think as, as the, the, I think the, going back to what you were asking, so it's not really answering to its entirety, there's got to be a fine line, as you say. So what I say as a union representative or as a private citizen, as long as I'm not going to utilize my opinions, on what I'm going to do in my professional career as my oath as a law enforcement officer. It's, as long as you can keep those separate, and I do, it's different. Everyone knows I dislike Jim Crowdoyle. Everyone knows. Everyone knows I dislike Al Crespo, who's in the room. He's right over there. <laughs> Actually, that's, that's, but, but I will tell you, but I will tell you this, but I will die for Al Crespo. And I'll I will die, die for you. I will die for Joe Crowdoyle. That's good. So just because I might not like somebody, does not take away from my oath of office. It does not take away from who I am as a law enforcement officer. And that's why there's such a fine line. I should have the right to express myself. I should be able to say if I dislike something. But when it comes down to putting on this uniform, I'm going to do my job 100%. It doesn't matter who it is. And I think that's the difference. Now, if I would have put, I hope that so-and-so, um, something about you know violence, or we shouldn't help this person, or if they call the police, we shouldn't respond. That is completely different. That is crossing the line. But questioning someone's uh, valor when it's a, when it's something that is a uh, a concern of my members, I don't see any issue with that whatsoever. Now, if it went into he had a 911 call, I was going to respond, or I, I I I slowed down the response. That's a whole other, and that will never happen. That will never happen. Okay. Right then. Can we please vote? You <laughs> need a motion. Motion. I'll make a motion to accept staff's recommendation. Hey, hold on. Let's, let's be very clear what we're talking about here. We're on uh, which record? Page 17, staff Step recommendation. All the way at the bottom of the page. Um, the bottom. Yes, or you can vote next. 
we need a second. We need a second. Yeah. 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 Well, while we wait for that second. <laughs> that picture on Twitter also is problematic for me for a citizen. If I were arrested, I've not been. <laughs> but if the I first picture of the arrest? Yeah, if I it? were arrested, I haven't gone to trial, I haven't, so now my image, as we're talking about images, right, my image is now out there as being arrested, and so I don't think that it's appropriate for someone in the capacity of law enforcement, be it private or professional, should post my image on a site saying I'm a thief, I'm a bad guy. And it's the same thing you asked for, right? Don't put it out there in the Herald that I'm a thief. But the same thing is happening there. We're saying... So we should get rid of body cams then. I don't... And it's the same thing. That's all public record. But public record and Twitter, Instagram are very different. I, 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 there are not many people out on the street who are going to like, let's today's the day I'm going to go to CIP and see, or to go to IA and see if I've been arrested and I've been photographed. This is extremely public, public. And I think that's the issue with social media is that it, they're... they're are too many areas that can get really muddy and people get, it can become a dangerous place. So you can't have an image. opinion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you can have an opinion, but you're... Just you're, can't tell anybody. No, you, you, are, you are allowed, of course you're allowed your opinion, right? But I'm going to get disciplined by But I wouldn't want to be that person. I wouldn't want that to be my cousin. I wouldn't want that to be my grandmother, where their image is now out there and they haven't done Look, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to second it, but I'm going to explain why. I think you deserve it based on what you just said earlier. Um, I think that what you said was admirable in the sense that you, you would die for people that you don't necessarily agree with. I'll still die um, for you, and, and, and I, I sure, I mean, uh, I mean it too. And, um, but what you just said is not conveyed in these Twitter posts, okay? In fact, right now, there is a huge gap between the community and the police department. And they view the police department a certain way. I don't have to tell you. you know, how they view it. Who's they? The, the community. A, 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 there's a portion of the community in the city of Miami that has a negative view of the police department, and there's another portion of the city of Miami that doesn't. We're not Chicago or Baltimore, or I, I, I disagree strongly with what you're saying. It's just like saying not everyone likes doctors or doesn't like nurses or a percentage. But I would say the majority. We don't have these issues, especially the racial issues that some other large cities have. We don't have them. Okay. We really don't. I would right. well, to that, Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> but look, just your I, just, I just wanted to explain. I think one of the few people coming from. Okay. Um, so and I think, think that, I just, to reiterate what you, what you said earlier, doesn't come across on some of these Twitter folks. I agree with my colleague that it's problematic that there's an ethnic connection to this as the police department. I think that, um, that the police department should be held to a little bit of a higher standard. I think it does negatively affect the public perception of the police department when members of the FOP are posting those kinds of things. Um, I think that uh, I also agree with her in the sense that it would be a little bit different. I don't know that I would vote the same way if this would just not be OPs, nothing to do with the police department, or nothing to do with the FOP. Right there, it says FOP. So we should make that an anonymous FOP page that any FOP member could post in that okay. way. I'm not going to get into the what if and what if and what if. I'm just telling you what I'm telling you. Take it for what it's worth, okay? I will. Um, and I, I just feel like uh, if in this case, everything you said doesn't come across in all those Twitter posts. And some of those Twitter posts do come across as a little, like, I'm borderline childish. Borderline, you know. And I think that the police department and uh, needs to be held to a little bit of a higher standard. But this isn't the police department, this is the fraternal order of police. Well, I send these. And that's my second. Well, I have, can I have one question? Is, do you have to be accept a friendship or accept the idol tweet? Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. How, how does that work? I mean, do you have to accept people that see your post? I, or is that something that's open? I'm not sure. I believe you have to connect to it. If you're private, to it. If you're private are you private to or you're I would have to check. I think you have to connect to it. Yeah. Twitter, not on Twitter. Video. Not on Twitter. Yeah. Twitter. No, not on Twitter. Twitter's, Twitter's, open. Twitter, Twitter's open. Yeah, Twitter's open. Unless you can, ba you, you can ban people, but you don't have to, you don't invite them on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, we have a second. I have a second, and then how many, um, all in favor? Five. We got nay. Three. Nay. 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 Nay.
Can I break the tie? <laughs> oh, wow. It's a show oh, my gosh. For the record, it's a show. Oh, man. Uh, uh, yeah. The Diablo is great pizza. Or five, five. Cool. Thanks. No, it's really Wait, what's this pizza? Andy Anos. Yeah, motion does not pass. All right, next. All right, next, next. Okay. Oh, I just landed Cozola's in uniform. Oh, Wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> there, I got to get going. There's one more that is complaining, and I think it's going to be really easy. And I am I'm going to table the rest of the complaints that we have. Um, hopefully, we can meet next Wednesday. Go ahead. Okay, it is, this is the final one from Mr. Garcia. It is alleged that Captain Ortiz and an unnamed off-duty lieutenant transferred an unknown employee because they were reporting misconduct within the unit. Mr. Garcia alleged the transfer was an act of racism and retaliation and refers to the Leo Affairs blog, Snake and Special Events, dated June 8th. Sounds like there's conflict within this unit. But without more information, I can't really tell you what this is about, if there was racism or retaliation involved. Discussion? Motion. Move, move to accept staff's recommendation. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Aye. <coughs> One nay. One nay. Who's the nay? Minka. 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 Um, can I have you ask you a question? Of course. So, so you just substantiated me on something okay. that doesn't even have my name on it. You understand that? No. So there's I no mean, evidence that my name is on it. There's no evidence that I I posted anything. There's no evidence. Mm -hmm. They just say a captain, and you just substantiated me on that. No. Topic. So I did it. What I did was I just said I I, I need more information. I don't agree with how things are laid out. I mean, mm -hmm. Well, it's a recommendation, and the board speaks as a whole, not through any one know, board member. I just and want to hear the board members can choose to explain or not, but it's, any explanation from any one board member does not uh, dictate what the entirety of the board would uh, would vote anyway. That, and in addition, this is just a recommendation. And if I may make a helpful clarification, right. it was not an affirmative vote. Of the exactly. Right. exactly. So there's a difference. That's, no, that's exactly it. It wasn't. Okay. There was no. She didn't make a motion or any affirmative vote to sustain the allegations. She just, for it could have been one of a hundred reasons, decided to vote against that particular motion. Not, not, she could have won the lottery. Never. It could have. You, you, you followed his thinking. Okay. Get out of here. Go ahead. Wednesday. I okay. am um, I am moving to um You guys are free to go if you can stay too, it's up to you. Um, next Are meeting we, we will hold next Wednesday uh, at two p yeah. if everybody's available. Okay. All right. If not, um, I'm sure Chris and everybody will email uh, you. Oh no, we're gonna figure this out as because we can't